go to Google and type Rathod's IAS. Then you can see our website Rathod's IAS Academy. There you have to click on login or register in the blue color. So if you have not registered yet, you have to click on do not have account and fill the details. So after once you have login, click on the courses. There you can see course list. And in this course list, you can see wide range of courses. Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IS classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to see current affairs of 26th May 2022. So let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see today's code. So today's code it is about democracy. So this code which is given by On Song Suki. So I think you know about this great personality that is On Song Suki, right? She belongs to Myanmar. So if you are talking about this quote which mainly says that democracy is when the people keep a government in check. So democracy is when the people keep a government in check. So this is about a democracy according to this Ong Song Suu Kyi. And you can use this quote whenever you are writing any answer regarding this democracy. So now let us try to see first topic. It is regarding abortion rights. So actually, so there is one important issue which is mainly seen in USA regarding uh, information leak, right, in USA. So I said you about that case as well. So let me know what is that famous case of USA, which is mainly talking about this abortion rights in USA. So this article, which is mainly talking about India must shift the disclosure, disclosure uh, discourse on abortion rights. So here we need to talk about abortion rights in India. Okay, so this article is important regarding GS paper to under health. So now let us try to see abortion rights in India. And you can expect a question regarding this abortion rights in India in mains. Okay, not from prelims. So actually what happened in India also, the number of women, pregnant people and as well as transgender people in India, they struggle every day to exert their choice about birthing and their bodily autonomy. Yes, now we are talking about USA. So in USA, there is a violation of rights. So something without a concern, uh, without the mainly some concerns regarding this abortion in USA. But if you are talking about in context of India also, we are facing some issues. For example, you can talk about women. Okay, you can talk about pregnant ladies and even transgender persons. They are struggling every day, okay, because they do not have proper rights regarding their bodily autonomy. So, if you are talking about some data, so there is a wide range of data which is given in this article. So, for example, if you are talking about World Health Organization, WHO. So, it's, so according to WHO, it mainly says that 6 out of 10 of all unintended pregnancies, they ended in induced abortion. So what is the meaning of induced abortion? Induced abortion means we are taking progesterones or we can talk about some unwanted pills. Okay, so we are taking that pills and by taking this pills or some hormones which will initiate abortions. So that is called as induced abortions. So out 6 out of 10 unintended pregnancies, you are mainly ending up with induced abortions. So around this 45 percentage of abortions in India, they are unsafe. Okay, they are unsafe. So 45 percentage of abortions are unsafe. And as per nationally representative study, which mainly published in this PLOS 1 journal in 2014, which mainly says that abortion is one of the important reason for 10 percentage of this maternal death in India. So here, abortion is one of the important cause for 10 percentage of maternal deaths in India and not only this and recently this National Family Health Survey 2019-20 which mainly says that about 3 percentage of all pregnancies in India they will be finally ended with abortion that is resulted in abortion. So more than half that is 53 percentage of abortions in India they are mainly performed by private sector. So if you are talking about government sector or public sector, they will be performing just 20 percentage of abortions. Okay, so why, why there is less number of abortions will be done by this public sector? Because public facilities, they have often lack abortion services. So because of this people, they are mainly moving towards this private sector to uh, go for abortions. 
and more than a quarter that is about 27 percentage of abortions they are mainly performed by the woman herself at home for example you can take about uh, some home remedies especially in the early stages of their pregnancy they can go for uh, eating of pineapple or papaya and even they can get some pills okay uh, on over the counter so that they can go for abortions so 53 percentage of abortions are done by private sector 20 percentage of uh, abortions by the public sector and 27 percentage women they are going for their home remedies and even especially in the tribal people as of my knowledge and as i came in contact with this tribal people so they will be using some natural remedies okay natural remedies for going for abortions example they will be eating egg okay egg uh, and in that egg they will be using pepper powder so they will be having belief that yes when we are going for eating of pepper powder uh, that will be leading to abortions and even uh, they will be use some seeds okay some seeds especially that we can use uh, we will be using daily in our in our kitchen so they will be using the natural things especially to go for abortion especially with my knowledge i'm saying this okay so in other fact here is like a recent study which mainly published in Lancet in 2018 which mainly says that 73 percentage of all abortions in India in 2015 they were medication abortions okay they are mainly taking postaglandins so we're talking about one act which is mainly regarding this abortions in India is Medica medical termination of pregnancy act here okay so here what happened so lancet report which mainly said that 73 percentage of all abortions in india in 2015 were medication abortions but what happened even though they are faced but even though they are safe but they are without any approval of medical practitioner so because of this it is mainly violated in this medical termination of pregnancy act and five percentage of all abortions they were outside the health services with the mothers other than this medication abortions and what happened we can also see some cases there are risky abortions and these risky abortions are mainly done by or performed by untrained people and that too in an unhygienic conditions okay so whenever we are going for abortion especially in some un, uh, con unsafe conditions or unhygienic conditions and mainly we are going for some inserting of some objects into the uterus or whenever you are going for ingestion of various substances and even if you want to go for abortion sometimes especially midwives uh, they will be going for pressing of ab abdomen uh, this will is all this will also leads to abortion sometimes so it's called as abdominal pressure so whenever we are going for abortion by this untrained people they are most of all risky and it will be also leads to the uh, leads to the death as well in sometimes so a recent study which mainly found that in india we are seeing there is cell, uh, sex selective abortions in india sex selective abortion means if the fetus is a girl child means they will be going for abortion because we have a son of soil phenomena that is still prevalent in india so we are mainly having some preference to the son rather than the daughter so if you're talking about this medical termination of pregnancy act which mainly enacted in 1971 and recently we came with amendment in 2021 and in the recent amendment we we increased the gestation period from 20 weeks to 24 weeks and there are some important uh, changes that we also came up with this medical termination of pregnancy act of 1971 with this amendments of 2021 and you have to know what are the important amendments we came up with already we discussed that topic number of times so we're talking about this act which mainly famed from a legal standpoint to primarily protect medical practitioners because even under our ips that is indian penal code induced miscarriage it is a criminal offense mainly to protect this medical practitioners we came up with this act and this act which also have a lack of choice and bodily autonomy of women and it mainly rests the decisions of absorb uh, abortion safe solely on the doctor's opinion so if you're talking about this medical termination of pregnancy act it is mainly not talking about bodily autonomy of women or the choice of women but here it is mainly focusing on the decision of this abortion will be solely dependent on the doctor's opinion okay so here what happened whenever we want to go for acceptance of this abortion indian society which is mainly situated in the context of population control and family planning but we do not talk about this abortion it is a bodily autonomy of women so if you're talking about some important recommendations you are given here is so first of all awareness important so awareness that abortion is a legal thing so that we can go for 
uh, aborting with a very safe in a very safe environment so if the people do not know that abortion is legal so whenever people they are thinking that abortion is illegal they will be searching for other other uh, other options mainly to go for ending of their pregnancy or termination of their pregnancy so here when we want to provide access for the safe abortion methods yes first of all we need to improve the awareness regarding the people and we need to say that yes abortion is legal and the second one here is medical termination of this pregnancy act does not recognize abortion as a choice here so here we need approval of medical practitioner even in the first few weeks of pregnancy and next one is even unmarried and transgender people they continue to face the stigma okay fix stigma to go for this health facilities so because of this they are mainly going for this unsafe care for this abortion and next one is we need to go for mandatory reporting under this poxo that is protection of children of uh, from the sexual offenses bill 2021 law okay so here whenever uh, whenever there is a mandatory reporting under this poxo for especially whenever there is any rape which is happening for Uh, for a minor girl and whenever she is becoming pregnant means what happened it mainly uh, impact privacy and other access to the adolescents to safe abortion services as well and next one is so there is a many many a times we can see there is a still coercion is there in agreeing into a permanent or a long term contraceptive methods so here we need to go for uh, giving or we need to go for awareness and we can provide government can provide some uh, contraceptive methods as well and next one is healthcare providers they may impose their own morality by insisting on husbands or pa- parental consent for abortion here so next one here is so despite the law which is mainly prohibiting sex determination the illegal ties persist so even though we have number of laws which mainly says that we should not reveal the sex of a of a baby in the womb of mother so here what happens still they are taking some bribing they are taking some corruption and doctors they are still revealing the gender so because of this what happen there is increasing of female feticide so whenever there is increasing of female feticide there will be imbalance that is seen in the sex ratio in the country right so because of this here we need to go for go for strict and stringent laws and stringent punishment regarding the sex reveal right and if you are talking about way forward there is a need there is urgent need in our country that we need to disclose uh, on abortion okay and it is not just a family planning and as well as maternal health issue but even it is one of the sexual health and as well as deeper to right of women as well and here whatever the law which is present in india that is medical termination of pregnancy act which is which is which is which is a single law which is uh, insufficient okay so here we need to come up with a more number of laws and we need to focus on improving of health system and finally we need to ensure good quality and as well as respectful abortion care for women so these are the some important things which are mainly said in this article and now let's try to see about diversifying plates for girls so this article which is mainly talking about dietary diversity for especially adolescent okay adolescent girl so this article is important from your society point of view which mainly comes in a gs paper too and now let's try to see this topic in a very great detail so if you are talking about context or if you are talking about introduction of this article it mainly says that there are multiple studies so there are multiple studies which are mainly showing that adolescence is a nutritionally demanding phase of life so in the phase of life we will be having child so first of all in the childhood we can talk about neonate we can talk about a child and after the child they will be enter into this adolescent stage and next one is adult stage and next one is old age right so whenever the people they are entering into this adolescent adolescent is nothing but i can say like teenage so you can understand this 13 to 19 years okay this teenage which mainly comes in this adolescent age so in this adolescent age so there will be number of changes that our body will undergo for example for the women uh, for the girl and as well as for the boy so this adolescent age it is a nutritionally demanding phases of the life so in this phase so there is a high demand for the nutrition so even though both adolescent boys and as well as girls they face some emotional changes as well during this puberty so especially girls they face more physiological demands and they require higher intake of micro and as well as micronutrients okay whenever the girl child which is, who is mainly entered into this adolescent or whenever she entered into this puberty that is the start of the reproductive cycles then then what happened there is a need for the higher 
higher intake of micro and as well as macronutrients so what happens so whenever they are not getting proper nutrition means so in this adolescent age especially adolescent girls they will most prone more likely to prone to this anemia so 40 percentage of anemia which is mainly susceptible for this girl when we are comparing with that of the boys so boys they have the vulnerability of 18 percentage of anemia and but the girls they will be having 40 percentage so in this way here dietary diversity is very very crucial for this girls and as well as boys during this adolescent age so we need to ensure appropriate nutrition for adolescent girls okay and it is one of the paramount thing because when you want to address this malnutrition so whenever the mother who, who is facing this malnutrition means obviously the child who mainly give birth by this girl or by this woman then that child will also have this problem of malnutrition so whenever we need to address this intergenerational impact of this malnutrition so we need to focus on this adolescent girls so if we're talking about focus on girls so even national family health survey five data of 2019 20 which mainly shows that there is increase in the trend of anemia among this adolescent girls by five percentage there is increasing of anemia by five percentage and the comprehensive national nutrition survey 2019 which also shows that even before the pandemic consumption of diverse food groups among the adolescents was very low and due to this COVID-19 pandemic so it led to further worsening of this dietary diversity especially for the women adolescents and children so the data which is mainly released by Tata Kernel Institute for Agriculture and Nutrition which mainly said that women dietary diversity in India which made it decline by 42 percentage due to this COVID-19 lockdowns okay so what happened now very few girls they are mainly consuming fresh fruits vegetables and as well as eggs okay and because of this lockdowns even there is a loss of midday meals program so because of this it also interrupted weekly folic acid supplements for this girls as well so here this mainly compounded by the challenges in providing nutrition services to out of school adolescent girls okay so because of this that led to increasing of vulnerability of this uh, nutrition status or malnutrition especially seen in this girls so adolescence it is a window of opportunity where practices of dietary diversity can be built to correct the nutrition deficiencies yes regarding this nutri nutritional deficiency also we can see number of diseases like quashiorcor marasmus etc so these are some nutritional deficiency disorders that is mainly seen in children so whenever there is decreasing of this dietary diversity yes we can see there will be increasing of this nutritional deficiencies nutritional deficiency diseases so talking about what are the recommendations are given so there are about seven to eight recommendations are given so first one here is we need to continue deliver this weekly iron folic acid supplements for this adolescent woman and here government and as well as some nutritional policies they need to emphasize on this diverse diet and as well as physical activities for women and next one is here they can include the locally sourced fruits vegetables and seasonal diets and inclusion of millets in their diet and next one is here we need to supplement and we need to strengthen the nutrition council for the adolescent girls and that can be done through community workers they can visit the homes and they can promote healthy habits diets virtual counseling and as well as comprehensive nutrition etc and next one is we need to promote even good nutrition among the adolescent through this nutri smart schools so in this nutri smart schools they will be going for building of kitchen gardens in the schools itself so this program which already had been implemented in a number of states so we need to go for increasing of awareness improving of availability and accessibility to diverse food groups as well and the second important thing we need to focus on service delivery platforms okay so here service delivery platforms need to be tapped adolescents and we need to think beyond the schools about this diverse plates okay and next one is young girls need to be equipped with accurate information about adequate and appropriate diets so that they can act as change of agents for the families community and as well as peer groups so if you want to change the behavior of the people or attitude of the people we need to talk about this abc component so this abc component in this behavior component we will be talking about this role of families as well right and this one is we need to also go for food diversification so food diversification which may be required to be complemented with the reformative steps such as recent amendment of increasing of legal age for marriage of a, a woman 
that may increase from 18 years to 21 years so in this way also we can go for improvement of malnutrition and next one here is adolescent nutrition status which is also related to the burden of micro and as well as macronutrient deficiencies so currently 80 percentage of this adolescents they are suffering from in hidden hunger so hidden hunger means nothing but we can say they are deficient in the micronutrients okay for example b12 vitamin d etc and next one here is we need to focus on this portion abhyan or now it is portion 2.0 so which mainly integrates the aspects of undernutrition anemia among the girls and as well as children and now let us try to talk about next topic it is regarding us taiwan relations so here you need to know where is this taiwan is located and you have to know about china taiwan relations as well so this article is important from your gs paper to under international relations so now let us try to see context so now what happened recently president of us he mainly made one affirmative reply to the question on whether us will come to aid come to help this taiwan's military in the case of any invasion by china so because of this a question which mainly raised the issues regarding whether us which is mainly shifting from its long standing a policy of strategic ambiguity over this taiwan or not so we're talking about details here you have to see the map of taiwan so this part is taiwan and this part is china and between this we have taiwan strait and here to the south of this uh, taiwan we have the south china sea and towards east we have this uh, philippines sea so these are some important geographical locations that you need to keep in your mind so we're talking about chinese china and taiwan relations so china has claimed this taiwan through one china policy since a chinese civil war which mainly forced to defeat it, to flee into this island in 1949 okay so from here onwards here china want to claim this or also claiming this taiwan actually so with taiwan is a self governed and de facto independent it has never formally declared independence from the mainland of china so here china is having one country two systems concept so this one country and two system formula so under this taiwan would have run to uh, it would have right to run to its own affairs and similar agreement is used in the hong kong as well so here taiwan which mainly claimed by china so this taiwan which mainly refuses this diplomatic relations with countries that recognize the region so this is about this china and taiwan relations so we're talking about some more important details regarding this uh, background of china taiwan relations actually here taiwan and china they separated because of this uh, civil war in 1949 and for since then here china considered this taiwan as a part of its territory and it want to have the complete control on this uh, territory so here taiwan still remain the says that no no we are we are not we are not the part of this china but we are having a sovereign state so we are a sovereign state so after decades of hostile intentions and angry rhetoric so relations between this china and as well as taiwan they start improving in 1980s okay and china came china came up with this one country two systems under which china would be given system uh, significant autonomy here okay and this taiwan so the offer was rejected but the government did not uh, did relax on the visits to this investments in china so there were also some limited talks were mainly seen between the two sides okay so this is about this uh, topic and now let's try to see what is the us stance so the very foundation of this us rapprochement as well as recognition of this people's republic of china is mutually understanding on the taiwan question here so this was mainly outlined three documents that is a shanghai comic and normalization comic and as well as 1982 comic so we're talking about this 1972 comic us which mainly agreed to the one of the china principle with understanding that it mainly acknowledges and does not challenge that all chinese all other either side of the taiwan state maintain that there was a but one china Uh, but one china and that taiwan is a part of china so what happened according to this 1972 comic so here us which mainly agreed okay to one china principles and next one here is chinese on either side of this taiwan state they want to maintain that uh, china one china and that taiwan is also part of the china it is under this 1972 comic so here us which mainly says that because of this russia ukraine conflict Uh, it also created a strong message that adversary become essential 
okay and we need some patience and as well as by increasing pro independent slant so here in this context i want to give you one main question for practice that is write a small note on india taiwan relations and answer should not be more than 150 words and now let's try to see next topic title says the monkey pox virus origins and outbreak so already we discussed this topic number of times and now let us have a brief look over this topic so this topic is important from your science and technology and even from health point of view so now let us try to talk about the context why it is in news so actually there are number of cases regarding this monkey pox which may be recorded so because of this it is a one of the attention that we need to pay regarding this monkey pox monkey pox virus so there is a recent outbreak of this monkey pox virus and there is a death of 220 220 confirmed cases and these cases which are mainly spread over 19 countries okay so highest number of cases which are recorded in this uk spain and portugal okay so this is about this context and if you are talking about details so if you see this image you can understand what are the signs and symptoms of this monkey pox so intense headache will be there fever swollen lymph nodes back ache chills and also you can face a muscle ache rashes and this illness which may last for 2 to 3 weeks and if you are talking about this monkey pox virus so how it spreads so actually this primary animals which mainly leads to this monkey pox virus is rodents that is for example rat family so whenever they are biting this monkeys or any other primates so whenever humans are coming in contact with this primate so this virus will be transmitted from this monkeys to a human so because of this the name which mainly came that is monkey pox virus so actually what happened human to human transmission is also highly possible but it is a very limited right so now let us try to see some facts regarding this monkey pox virus so this monkey pox virus it is a viral zoonotic disease zoonotic disease means it mainly spreads from animals to humans and it mainly occurs primarily in the tropical rainforest areas and central and as well as west african regions and later on it will be exported to other regions in the world so monkey pox virus which mainly infection which mainly detected in squirrels gambian pochard rats dormice and as well as some species of monkeys so monkey pox which mainly caused by this monkey pox virus so actually it mainly belongs to this ortho pox virus genus and this was first discovered in year 1958 and later on it mainly led to two outbreaks of pox disease okay and the symptoms which mainly includes fever and we can see rashes on the skin so it will be like uh, chicken pox okay chicken pox uh, how we can see bubbles which are present on all over the body so in the same way in this monkey pox also we can see this bubbles will be there and we can see swollen lymph, lymph nodes and it also causes this lymph nodes to swell that is lymphadenopathy also seen here and this uh, monkey pox virus which is mainly transmitted to people from the wild animals such as rodents and as well as primates and human to human transmission is also occurs and if you are talking about human to human transmission so first case which mainly recorded in 1970 in the democratic republic of congo that is in drc region so if you are talking about fatality rate here up to 10th okay 1/10 of people ill with monkey pox they will they may die so especially this occurs in the younger age groups and if you're talking about treatment yes clinical presentation of this monkey pox which mainly resembles that of smallpox which mainly related to ortho pox virus infection and actually it mainly declared as eradicated in the world wide in 1980 yes we have a vaccine that is vaccinia vaccine which mainly used during this smallpox eradication program so here the new third generation of this vaccinia vaccine that can be used for the prevention of the smallpox and as well as monkey pox so now let us try to see the previous question which appeared in the upsc prelims consider the following diseases diphtheria chicken pox smallpox which of the following diseases have been eradicated in india that is smallpox only so in this way also you can get questions so now let us try to see next topic it is regarding 78 percentage of students they found remote learning burdensome it is according to survey so this article is important from your education which mainly comes under your gs paper 2 so if you see context it mainly says that nearly nearly 80 percentage of students they found learning at home during the pandemic is burdensome 
yes during this pandemic yes everyone they went for this online education even schools colleges universities and phd levels as well so here 80 percent of students they felt it is very very difficult to go for this uh, to go for this uh, learning from home actually in this upsc preparation so most of the students they will be preparing for the home and in, if you are preparing from the home especially through online also it will be have a great uh, success rate right so if you are talking about details ministry of education released a national achievement survey 2021 report so it mainly talks about the access access the access uh, it mainly assesses the health of school education system in the country through a survey of children who are having some learning competencies in the class 3rd 5th 8th and 10th so nearly about 34 lakh students of 1.18 lakh schools in 720 districts from the government and as well as government aided and private unaided schools they mainly participated in this survey so this survey which mainly recorded that the perception of sample students on remote learning during this pandemic they found about 78 percentage of students they found burdensome and nearly the same percentage of students that is about 80 percentage of the students they felt that learning was better in the schools because of help they are received from their classmates so now in this online learning they are not going to get any help from their classmates and as many as 24 percentage of students they had no digital devices at the home and 45 percentage of students they found experience joyful and as well as 38 percent they said that they had difficulty in learning and this report which mainly evaluated competencies of the students uh, in the subject for example mathematics languages environmental studies that is evs for the class 3rd and 5th and they also analyzed about uh, different languages and mathematics science and social studies for the 8th class and for the 10th language mathematics science social science and as well as english so they mainly found that out of the score of 500 so student across the various uh, classes they perform better in languages but they may lack it behind subjects like science and as well as mathematics so this is about this topic and now let us try to see this next topic that is frame policies to protect this lgbtiq work uh, iq plus workers says ilo so this article is very important and here this article is important from our society point of view or social justice point of view yes in our society we have women men apart from that we this lgbtq also the part of our society so we need to focus on them also so if we are talking about context it mainly says that a document which mainly released by international labor organization and this uh, document which is mainly says that inclusion of lesbian gay bisexual transgender intersex and queer persons in the world of work okay so in the world of work which mainly repent which mainly recommended that so the member countries of this ilo and some employees organization representatives of workers they need to launch some social protection programs and these social protection program they need to remove barriers that these people face in the society so if we're talking about details to are given in this report which mainly says that citing the data for various sources i elvo document which mainly said that discrimination has an economic cost not just to this lgbtq persons and their families but also to enterprise and national economies okay citing the data from the various sources here ilo international labor organization came up with the document and this document which mainly said that yes discrimination which is mainly faced by this lgbtq persons okay so because of this discrimination they will be facing not only the economic cost just for themselves but even for their families as well so in this context here ilo which mainly said that the lgbtq persons they face harassment they face violence and discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation gender identity gender expression as well as sex characteristics so it also said that national policy and labor law review will allow the governments to assess their country's work policy environment okay and they need to identify first they need to identify what are the problems you are facing and based on that problems they need to come up with improving of legal and as well as policy environment we need to go for ending of discrimination as well as exclusion and we need to comply with international instruments as well and ilo said consultation with this lgbtq communities and social dialogue with employers and workers organization is very very important key here so we need to work on this 
I need to work on this LGBT community and what are the problems you are mainly faced and what can we come up with the solutions. So here we need to go for identification of barriers which are mainly faced by this LGBTQ persons and we need to go for government schemes that need to be come up and this scheme mainly includes some social protection as well. So here this ILO which mainly asked government to work with small and medium industry associations, sectoral unions and informal economy workers associations as well. So we need to go for monitoring of discrimination in the informal economy and to address stigma and discrimination related to gender and as well as sexual identity. So we need to encourage employers organization to end sexual discrimination in the workplaces as well. Okay, so now I want to give you a small question that is a main question. So recently here uh, ILO came with this world of work report and it mainly came up with unemployment rate, right? So here unemployment has been found to be more prevalent in the educated and as well as less so in the poor, unskilled and semi-skilled people. So clarify the statement and bring out the causes for the sharp declining of jobs in India as per the latest data. So in this way you can expect your questions in your mains. So try to write answer and answer should not be more than 150 words. And now let us try to see some facts regarding this ILO that is International Labour Organization. So it is mainly headquartered in Geneva, Switzerland and it is a specialized agency of United Nations. So it mainly established in 1919 uh, with the Treaty of Versailles. It is mainly responsible for setting of labor standard to develop policies and to devise programs promoting this decent work for all men and as well as women. So it is only three party agency and it mainly tries to bring together governments, employers and as well as workers and there are 187 member states as well. Okay, so if we are talking about objectives, the first one here is to promote and realize the standards and fundamental principles and right to work and to create greater opportunities for women, men and they are focusing on decent employment and income and they are focusing on enhancing of coverage and effectiveness of social protection for all and they are mainly focusing on strengthening of tripartism and as well as social dialogue. So this is about this topic and now let's try to see the yesterday's question. The first one is regarding pardoning power of the president. So president can pardon sentences inflicted by court martial and both president and as well as governor have concurrent power in respect of suspension, remission, commutation and of the death sentence. Yes, these two are correct. And this one here it is regarding deputy chairman of Rajya Sabha. So he is subordinate to the chairman of Rajya Sabha. So he is not subordinate to chairman, he is directly responsible for this Rajya Sabha. And this one is he can vote in his office by giving in a written resignation to the president of India. So he will be giving resi resignation to the chair, per chairman of this Rajya Sabha but not president. And he is directly responsible to Rajya Sabha, yes. So that option will be 2, 3 only. And today's question, so the first one it is regarding resolution which is mainly passed by Rajya Sabha. That is vice president can be removed by the resolution passed in Rajya Sabha. So here it is mainly talking about effective majority. So what is the meaning of effective majority? And next one it is regarding ordinance making power of president under article 2 and 3. So try to read this statement which are given below and give me the correct option in the comment box. And now I want to make a small announcement. So we in Rathod Science, we came up with this entire foundation course for your UPSC, CSC 2023 and 2024. So the validity of this course it is for two years and we are providing like more than 600 hours of classes. So this will be very useful to understand the concept and especially ethics and geography they are dealt by me. Okay, so if you want to watch the demo videos, you can visit our website rathorsisacademy.com. There you have to register with your email ID so that you can watch three demo videos which is a free of cost for each and every module. Okay, and apart from this, if you want to uh, get this PDF of this today's Hindu analysis, so please join the telegram channel and the link is given in the description box. And if you have any query, you can call me on this number 8074765513. So now let us try to see today's Hindu PDF. So this is our today's Hindu PDF. So the date here is May 26th and this is Delhi edition. So first article regarding this Yasin Malik, he gets life term for terror funding. So you have to know what is terror funding. So what happened a special court which mainly sentences Kashmiri separatist leader, this Yasin Malik uh, to life imprisonment in a terror funding case. 
so he he mainly impo he mainly oh, so important reason behind the sudden spontaneous uh, shutdown of uh, main market in Srinagar and as well as a strong political reaction Jammu and Kashmir mobile internet uh, which mainly suspended in some parts of Kashmir Valley as well okay so now if you move forward leave the city page leave the states page and directly now you can move on to this editorial page that is page number six so in this editorial page I discussed about this abortion rights okay and there is one article regarding this uh, US must impose ban on assault so it is talking about gun ownership in USA so you can easily understand that topic and in this op page there is one article regarding this growing exports okay so this article is also very important and try to read this article once and regarding this diversifying of this plates for girls I discussed this topic and if you see this data point so this data point which is mainly talking about pollution and its impact on life so recently here national human rights commission which also issued advisory to the central and national state governments about minimizing of pollution in india so how the pollution which is mainly related to this ecological degradation and even how it is impacting the life so this is the thing which mainly said here with some data so this will be very important and you can talk about em pm 2.5 here and now if you move forward in this text and context i discussed regarding this us cyber relations i discussed regarding this a monkey pox virus and if you move on to this new space there is nothing much important today so here you can talk about role of media in promoting health lauded so actually here in your governance point of view you can see directly in your syllabus regarding this role of media so here this article will be helpful and become handy when you are writing your mains answer and next topic is regarding this learning burdensome i discuss this topic and there is a first woman combat pilot okay so this is one of the important example for the women empowerment so you can see that article and next topic it is about lgbtq workers i discuss this topic and there is one article regarding this who seeks india's help to test monkey pox cases i discussed about this monkey pox and here you need to refer some facts regarding this who and next topic here is z differences china's human rights record so what happened in china there is one region called as xinjiang province so here this xinjiang province which is mainly inhabited by this uyghur muslim they are muslim minority people so against this there are many human rights violations that's mainly seen so you have to know about some facts regarding this uyghur muslims and next topic it is regarding cement is the next target in war against inflation so here cement price which had been very much high and now recently there are some steps which are mainly taken by government to control this inflation for example RBI increased this uh, interest rates and the next year is in yesterday's lecture we studied that on sunflower oil so there is decreasing of import duty so now here government which is mainly going to think about this uh, cement cement is the next important target so these are some important articles that appear in our today's Hindu newspaper I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Please subscribe to Rathor Science Academy and don't forget to like, share and comment my videos. And for the demo videos, so please visit our website Rathor Science Academy and there you can watch the three demo videos. And if you want to get the PDF, you can join the Telegram channel. Link is given in the description box. Thank you so much. Go to Google and type Rathor's IS. Then you can see our website Rathor Science Academy. There you have to click on login or register in the blue color. So if you have not registered yet, you have to click on do not have account and fill the details. You have to give your name, email ID, your mobile number and password. And finally, you can click on this register button. And once your details are filled, then registration will be successful and click on OK and come back and click again on login and register and you have to log in now so after once you have login click on the courses there you can see course list and in this course list you can see wide range of courses so you can see indian his indian society is he sat ethics international relations essay and if you buy all the courses then we will be giving access to all these courses like history economy geography and this is our mains answer writing course there you can see different batches are there and this is our prelims test series if you want to watch demo videos you have to click on play course and in history we will be having five modules so there if you want to see demo videos in that so and so part of history you can click on that play course 
and before payment you can see only three demo videos and after payment you can see all those videos will be displayed on the screen you will Hello be students, having settings regarding IS. quality and My also speed you can adjust faculty. according to Today your the requirement the world history lectures the most this important topic history. in the world history of the UPSC and CSA exam that is the French next, Revolution. Let us try to see other subject, international relations, click on play codes and the same thing that will follow. Before payment, three demo videos. After payment, every video will be displayed on screen and you can click on the play button, then full screen and then settings. So this will be follows to all Hello, the welcome courses. to the lecture. A very important topic we are going to cover up in today's lecture that is Indo-Pacific. Every day in newspaper we are hearing this word Indo-Pacific region and the important. This is regarding polity and the faculty is Shashwat Rago ma'am. Hello and welcome everyone to Rathors IS. This is Shashwat Raghav, your quality faculty on this platform. We'll be basically covering our GS Paper 2 and we very well know in GS Paper 2 we have governance, constitution, polity along with social justice and IR. By me, your constitution, polity and governance subjects will be covered. In GS, in UPSC side for GS Paper 2, only the subjects have been mentioned, the governance, constitution, polity, but Faculties. This is about economy. So economy is taught by servant sir. So these are some demo videos you can watch like this. An economy Welcome is like one hundred and twelve hours of uh, course. Friends from this class on work. Hi friends, my name is Sarvan Kumar, I am your economic faculty. Welcome to Rathod's IAS. Friends, in this class, we are going to study about the gross value added. What is the meaning of this gross value added? Now, under this, we have three heads. Basic price, right, factor of... And next is science and technology. You can click on the video and you can click on play button and full screen. Welcome to Rathod IAS. Going to the DNA. That uh, kind of bank is called as a DNA data bank. So you need to create a DNA data bank at a national level, okay, where the information of all the uh, criminals, okay, all the suspects. Okay, So these are the number of courses that you can watch the demo videos and after once you watch the demo videos and after once you satisfied so click on the buy now button and after that you need to enter some details later on you can click on proceed and you can give your mobile number and also email id and finally you can use this razor pay payment system for the purchasing of these courses.